Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is modeling and design of solid elements in RFM6. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Dluba Software. For instance, the Dluba website, the German and English webinars, newsletters, customer projects, and so on. I will be the moderator and also the presenter of today's webinar. I will be supported by my two colleagues, but they can introduce themselves. Yeah, hello, my name is Stefan Frenzel. I'm working here in, uh, at Luval in the development of the dynamic add-ons and of course in the customer support. And I will answer your questions today. Hello, my name is Frank Vollstich. I'm responsible for product engineering and quality uh, management. And today I will answer your questions. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams that the attendees can see the full screen. Some words for the yeah, attendees who participate the first time in a Dubai uh, webinar. You can show or hide your control panel and then ask your question in that field here and my colleagues will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar because there are too many, you will get an email after the webinar. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email questions to info at .com. Okay, to the agenda today, I will model this yeah, connection here, such a solid element with a bolt here. And then I will do a stress analysis for the steel components and also for the line welds. Here are line welds at the end of the webinar. And then I will do a result evaluation and a documentation. Okay, yeah, before I start the presentation, I, yeah, a small hint to our yeah, booth on our on the bow in Munich in April. You can book your live presentation and you can secure your free ticket. You know, just click that link here or you can you know, scan the QR code. At the end of the webinar, I will show you where you can find the PowerPoint slides and then you can book your live demo if you want to visit our booth at the bow. The uh, webinar will be recorded. You will get an email in the next days with a link to the website with the, um, with the video and the model and the PowerPoint slides. You will also get the attendee certificate. I will show you the website at the end of the webinar. Okay, then let's start in RFM6. I create a new file. So I call it connection. Okay, 3D. Also member surfaces and yeah, important the solids are activated. Yeah, by default. I activate the design add on stress strain analysis. And if I click on the standards, you can see all is gray. The add on stress strain analysis designs, yeah, not according to a standard, but uh, the yeah, stresses will be compared with the yeah, maximum stresses. Okay, that's why there is new design uh, code uh, or standard activated. So, at first, I will modify the grid you know, at the bottom, right click, edit. I would like to have a space between the grid points uh, of one centimeter. Our connection is only uh, 10 by 15 centimeters large. So I change the units for the lengths from meter to centimeters. Okay. So, and then I change the grid 
to one centimeter. Okay. I you know right above I change the work plane to X Z and I look in minus Y direction. Okay, I zoom in. So now I can start here left above with a new line. So three lines. 10 centimeters large and I stay I will stay in the dialogue but I change to arc so and I draw an arc okay that's all and we can create the first um, surface yeah? the edge of the uh, solid you left above I select the boundary lines so and we have to define the thickness and the material with that button here create new thickness the thickness can be one millimeter it doesn't matter when I create the solid or extrude the surface to a solid the uh, surface will be without thickness okay the material is Okay, as the steel S235, but uh, I show you where you can find it in the yeah, library. Uh, European steel, and I select the steel S235. Okay. Okay. So and I select the boundary lines and the uh, surface was created then i create an opening here yeah, left above opening circle with a radius of two centimeters okay so and now left above here yeah, a new node I create a new node on that point here and I use here you know, right above the uh, uh, yeah, function uh, the, the connect selected lines in that case at intersection so now the circle is divided and there are two lines the yeah, reason for that is that later I will create the bolt and between the bolt and the yeah, and that um, surface or in, in that case the solid, I will create a contact solid and the load on the bolt should be only on that side of the bolt. Yeah? Uh, force in X direction. That's the reason why I did that. Okay, now I created uh, create a solid, right click on the surface and then extrude surface into solid. Uh, and it depends on the surface uh, yeah, coordinate system, in which direction is minus and in which direction is plus. In that case, in plus direction, it goes to that side. I switch or I extrude it to the other side. That's why I select here or enter here minus seven. Material, material is okay. And the yeah, boundary surfaces should be without thickness. I apply, okay. And the solid was created. Uh, and now that boundary surfaces are without thickness means that the surfaces haven't got any stiffness. So then I change to the view in minus Y direction again. So, or at first I double click on the solid. Ah, that was wrong. On that point, or you can also search the solid 
here on the left side in the navigator data and double click or right click and edit the, um, the solid. So there's a stress strain analysis configuration. It's default at the moment. I would like to edit it to check that. Yeah, and it's quite okay. Tau max. The uh, sigma uh, one, two, three, and the sigma with the equivalent stresses. So, and those are the principal stresses, the sigma one, two, three. Okay. Okay. So now I create the next surface, a circle. No, that was wrong. That was the, the next step should be, I would like to create the solid that we, um, yeah, I, I will show you what what I uh, what I do. Just a moment. I select that node here and copy it in minus set direction, minus two centimeters. So I create a copy and change the work plane in x y. Okay. And I change the work plane origin to that side. Okay. So I deselect those solid, did this solid, hide selected objects, and I view in set direction. So, and I create a new surface, a rectangle. Yeah, that thickness is quite okay. And from that point to that point. So, and I extrude it. So yeah, 20 centimeters, oh, okay. Yeah, for that uh, solid, uh, we can yeah, choose, for example, material timber, okay? Because at the, in the next step, we will uh, yeah, do the operation, this the solid minus this solid with the Boolean operations. So I cancel the visibility mode and so okay. So and in the next step, as I said, I deselect or I delete this node. In the next step, we will yeah subtract this um, solid from this solid. So I do a right click on that solid. And I edit it. So, and I choose the solid type hole. Okay. Yeah. Can't be. Uh, ah, that's okay. So, and now the new solid is, was, was created. That's the original solid. That's the hole. And yeah, this one is subtracted by this one. And we, we subtract this one from this one and that's the new solid. Okay. So, and I do right click on the, yeah, generated solid, edit. And uh, left 
you know, on the left side at the bottom, I cancel the generated state because we would like to work only with this solid. Okay. Okay. So and now we can also we can delete the whole solid. Right click, edit. Uh, no, right click, and then not only delete but delete with boundary surfaces. That's quite important. Okay. And now our yeah, main solid was created. I can go in the table. Where are the solids? Now I delete those lines, delete row, delete row. Okay, now our solid is solid number one. Now it's better for the overview. So then the next step, I change the work plane to set and the origin to that point okay now the work plane is correct and we take a look in minus y direction so at, in the next step we create the circle now with the same thickness and the same material that's okay so, and with a radius of 1.9 centimeters. So, and we, yeah, we, we divide the circle with a line. I change to the wireframe model. I left the both with a new line. Okay, in the middle. So, and then right above, with the same function, connect selected lines at intersection. Okay, I can delete this line. And now the lines for the bolt is also divided in two parts. So then I extrude it. It's better for the overview. I extrude this circle as well. So face into solid. In minus two centimeters, S235, okay. So. And now, I would like to create the contact solid. Only one half here, such a ring in the yeah in the space between the this main solid and the bolt. And uh, in, in that space here. If you uh, wouldn't have any space between the surfaces, uh, those are the boundary surfaces. And when you have when you haven't any space between them, you can um, create. I will show you surface releases, yeah, such surface releases. But I will use the space for a contact solid. So that's why. Also in the next step, I will create the boundary surfaces. I Create a new surface, a polygon in that case, with without thickness this time. Okay. I start with this one. Okay. So I zoom a little bit out. And in. So the same at the bottom. Okay. Then uh, another function select boundary. 
Ah, uh, without thickness. I forgot to do it for that, surf that surface. I will change that later. Okay. Okay. So, and I can double click on it and change it to without thickness. Okay. So, I copied that surface from that point to that point. Okay. So, now all, all boundary surfaces are created and I can create the new solid, the contact solid. With that button here, new, uh, set new solid, or you can right click here and define or select new solid. So standard, yeah, at the moment standard is okay. We will change it later. I select the boundary surfaces. So this one, ah, I have to deselect the autocomplete. So this one, this one, this one, this one, change to the wireframe model. This one, and only one is remaining. Okay, we can check it. So that's okay. Okay. Yeah, and we can also change it to the contact solid. And we have to define the con uh, contact conditions. So with that button here, create new contact. There are different possibilities, um, full tra force transmission, failure under compression, failure under tension. We will use failure under tension. Yeah, that the bolt isn't glued and at the edge of the hole. So then here, rigid friction. Yeah, you can see different possibilities. Rigid friction. Uh, yeah, I, I define a small friction fa factor. We won't have any friction in our system. Okay. So, and we have to define the yeah, opposite um, surfaces. Yeah. That surface and that surface. There are already a proposal, 28 and 31. We have to check it. Yeah. 28 and uh, I have to go to the wireframe model 28 and 31. Yeah, that's okay. So I can leave the dialog and the contact solid was created. You can select it and you can see it. Yeah, and the space between the board and the plate here. So now I mirror the contact solid with that function here. Create copy. Y set is the plane. And I select the point in the middle of the circle. Okay, that's all. That part of the bolt and the contact solid was created. So I copy the complete bolt to the other side. Copy, I have to change the vector from here to here. Okay. So, and in the next step, I have to fill out the space and the overhang as I, I enlarge the bolt here. So, with the extrude function, 
three centimeters as 255. Okay, same on the other side. That goes quite quickly. So minus three, okay. And the space here. Also minus three. Okay. So the model is complete. What is the missing? Yeah, we will support in the first step that surface, edit surface, and I add supports. Yeah, both. I change the dialog, support, create a new support. Now it should be rigid in all directions or fixed in all directions. Okay, so and now we yeah, for that we can check if the model is yeah, complete and is okay, we calculate the self weight load case that was created automatically. Yeah, it should be fine, okay. So, and you can see yeah, there is a yeah, quite rough uh, mesh. And I would like to show you a function or a feature. So in the Navigator display, you can see the mesh. You can disable it. And I would like to introduce that setting here or that function, mesh quality. Where is my panel? That's on the other screen. Okay. And when you click that button here, you can see the mesh quality. Yeah, 80% are okay. Yeah, for 20% are a warning. Yeah, that's quite clear with, with such a rough mesh. I can show you the mesh settings. Yeah, that's quite rough. We change it to one centimeter. And you can see the quality criteria for the solids in the dialog here. If you have a ratio larger than one to 20 uh, for, yeah, for the sizes of the, uh, of the mesh or of the element, then you will get a warning and a failure uh, with that uh, aspect ratio and uh, parallel deviation and so on. Okay, and apply. The program creates a new mesh and you can see 99% are okay, only 1% yeah, deliver a warning. Yeah, I will calculate with that mesh because I would like to have a get a short uh, calculation time in that webinar. Actually, we uh, recommend uh, um, yeah, minimum four or five uh, elements on the yeah, smallest size here. Uh, at the moment, there are only two elements, but for the webinar and to save calculation time, it's quite okay. I can disable the mesh quality Okay, and I can also with that setting or with that setting here, un, uh, disable the mesh. Okay, then we have to apply a load on, as I already mentioned, on that surface and yeah, that surface and that surface, okay. So I would like to apply a load of, or three loads of um, 35 kilonewton 
but I have to yeah, apply it as a phase load. That's why we have to calculate the surface load. I measure uh, with a double, double click. I can edit the surface and I can, yeah, the, it displays the area of the surface. Yeah, to have the exact, or, uh, yeah, the exact value. I have to, you know, at the, on the left side at the bottom, can change the units and decimal places for the areas here to six decimal places. Okay. Now, and I can write down the value here for the surface number 57. Okay. So then I apply a new surface load. So in X direction and 45 divided by 0 0.00177. Okay, and the program calculates the parameter or the, the load automatically. So I have to select the surfaces, this surface. Okay. I can do that uh, because all surfaces have the yeah, same size in that case here. Yeah, otherwise, you have to create yeah, more loads. Okay, so we can move the load a little bit. Uh, okay. So you can also find the load uh, on the, oh, I have to change the taskbar that I can see all. Okay, in the navigator data, you can search for the load. Actually, uh, or at the moment it's, it's, it is the self-weight load case, we will change it. I can, see the surface load here and if you double click on it we uh, yeah, reach in the, the same dialogue i would like to show you another possibility to calculate the load the surface load with a formula so i enter 45000 newton yeah se units we, we have to use se units divided by and here with that info button, you, come to, uh, you reach that table uh, with op different uh, object properties. So I search for SUS. So then surfaces, yeah, other surfaces and area. Okay. Okay. And I enter area number 57. Okay, and you can see the surface load uh, yeah, was calculated. And you see there is a small difference. Yeah, only a small difference, but that is the correct value. Okay. Yeah, and if you want to yeah, change the load later, you can go to the formula and only enter yeah, the load here. Okay. I think it's a really good feature. So in the next step, I go to the load cases and combinations. Load cases and combinations. So that's the current load case. I call it FD. We uh, apply uh, yeah, loads with yeah, safety uh, that contain all already a safety factor. So then the design situations, I delete the design should, uh, situations for the serviceability limit state. We only work with the ultimate limit state and we have to activate the stress strain uh, analysis for it. 
we uh, although we have got only one load combination one load we have to create a design situations because you can activate the add-ons only for design situations in RFM6. Okay, I gave, uh, uh, turn to the base data. I disabled the combination wizard and keep the load combinations. I only change the safety factor because we already have got um, yeah, design loads. So, okay, design situation yeah, contains only this load case. So, and then we can calculate all. So, and we take a look at the solid results, for example, the Sigma X. Ah, and you can see where our, uh, yeah, on this side of the bolt is pressure, here yeah, tension uh, for the uh, Sigma X, yeah, and there's no tension on that side. We can also take a look at the deformation. And we can also animate it. Okay, let's disable the contact solid. You know, um, left at the bottom, the views. There, there we can find the visibilities and we select the visibility for solids, solids by type and we display only the standard solids. So, and we take a look in minus Y direction. Okay, and I can animate it again. Yeah, and you can see the bolt can uh, be released from the edge of the hole because of the uh, contact solid. Okay, so then we can also take a look yeah, uh, at the bottom on the table, stress strain analysis. Uh, ah, okay, uh, configuration is deactivated. I have forgot something. We have to define for all the standard solids by right click the stress uh, strain analysis configuration uh, we use for all the same the default setting okay now we have to do the stress strain analysis again okay yeah those are the results the yeah, maximum stress ratio is for the principal stresses, sigma one, two, three. That's tau max, and that's those are the equivalent stresses. Yeah, we did an elastic design. If you yeah, perform a plastic design, yeah, you can apply in my eyes yeah, higher loads. Yeah? But then you have to check the strain uh, for in the static analysis. Strain equivalent total strains. When when you do a plastic design, the maximum plastic uh, strain should be yeah, five percent according to Eurocode. At the moment, we have got only elastic strain uh, of about one not percent, uh, uh, um, zero point one percent. Okay, so in the next step, I would like to uh, define the line while the joints. I 
cancel the visibility mode. Okay, I delete the support. Okay. So, and I copy that surface here with the same function that we already used. Move and copy, create a copy, uh, minus two centimeters, in that direction zero. Okay. So I would like to increase the size of the plate. Just a moment, I disable or hide the selected objects. Change the work plane to a Y set. Okay. New origin. So, okay. Okay. And I take a look in X direction. So, and I can drag and drop the nodes. Okay, so I only have to change the setting of the surface, double click. At the moment it's without thickness. I change it to standard and I create a new thickness, 20 millimeters. Okay, S 235, that's okay. Okay, so now I moved uh, that plate here because we can't uh, yeah, create an, a line by the joints on a surface without thickness. That's why we have to create um, uh, yeah, uh, a surface with thickness in that space here. So I cancel the visibility mode. And I select the four lines with the control key. Okay. I copy them. Minus two centimeters. Okay. And with that button here, a new dialog is opened. And I can select linked uh, lines with surface. I select the template. We are the same. We use the same thickness, 20 millimeters. Okay. And now the space is filled. So, and now on the left side in the navigator data, you can find the types for lines and here the line by the joints. By right click, I can select new line by the joint. So we have to, to define the joint type. We are butt joints, corner joints. Here you can see the preview on the right side, the lap joints and the T joint. We will use the T joint. In our case, single filled, that's okay. Continuous, and I define the weld size of 10 millimeters. And I have to select the lines and surfaces. So, I change to the wireframe model. At first, I have to select the line, then the area to be connected, and then the base plate. So, add new object here on the left side, same procedure, line, area to be connected, and the base plate. So, we have to do that four times. Line surface number one and surface number two, and also here. 
Okay. 64 is the base plate. It's on the right side and it should be okay. So, and those are the line welded joints. Uh, I go in the dialogue again. And we have to define the stress strain analysis configuration. It's by default. We can edit it if we want. Yeah, that's empty because, uh, as I said at the beginning, the stress strain analysis add on calculates not according to a standard. Yeah, and you have to calculate the limit stress yeah, with the a certain correlation coefficient according to the standard. Okay. So we perform a stress strain analysis again. Uh, okay. I forgot to support the plate here. I double click on it. Support, Richard, okay. So next trial. Uh, with the rough mesh, we get the results immediately. So those are the solid stresses, we can also go to the table. Stresses on solids are the same results as before. And here the stresses, here are the stresses in the line welds. Okay, yeah. That's all. Change it to this one. Yeah, and you can use different options for the yeah, result evaluation. For example, when you go into navigator data and the guide objects, there are clipping planes, clipping boxes, and so on. Yeah, for yeah to print it maybe uh, in the printout report, you can also uh, use the function sections, also here above, new result section. Let's create you know, one or two sections. I create the section with two points and vector. Okay, I select two nodes. And for example, this one and this one. And yeah, we can modify the we can modify the values, for example, the x value from 10 to 15 for the second point. 15. And uh, if you want to get the results in the middle of that plate here, we can also move the um, section in minus uh, y direction. That's why we enter six here instead of seven and apply it okay so and in the result navigator we can find the result sections and i can activate it and you see the results for the different stresses So let's uh, we are create another section. Maybe we would like to uh, create a section in the middle of the board here, a horizontal section. I can double click, for example, on the result section and copy this one and change the projection from set to Y. And I have to change some values, uh, not minus 10 at the top, so not in the middle, but in the middle, minus five centimeters. Okay. 
Yeah, that's all. Okay. And if I uh, only uh, activate section number two, I can take a look at the results. Yeah, and then you can print such sections in the printout report. Yeah, and in that case, yeah, seems to be the maximum value I print only. Yeah, the, this view here in the printout report. But for example, for the principal stress, tau stress, and the equivalent stress. How to do that? We are left at the top. Print graphics to printout report. So at first we define window filling. And now you can print the current only or a multi print. And let's use the multi print, print option. Then we have to you know, click on the different dialogues here. For the model, I use the current view, then in set direction, in minus X and minus Y direction. And the loads, you know, only the load case number one, in the you know, current view and the results of the add-on. Now, now we don't need those results, only the add-on. Solids, the stresses in uh, the, the tower, sigma for the principal stresses and equivalent stress. Okay, in the current view. Yeah, that's okay. And if we switch to the general dialog here, takes a short time to create the images. Then we have I've got a preview of the model in the different directions, then loads and the different stresses. So then we can save and show the printout report. Now you, you can give him a name. You can select the items here. Now, for example, the line where the joints. Then for the stress analysis, yeah, we can deselect the stresses by on surfaces. The surfaces were, well, well, only help surfaces for the line where it joins, but we select the stresses on solid by solid. Yeah, that's quite okay. And we can generate the printout report. Yeah, and that way you can, yeah, yeah. also with the multi-print function, you can print different yeah, or other uh, views in the printout report. So let's take a look, for example, for this graphics. Now yeah, we saw it already. Then the line by the joints can zoom a little bit in. Those are the parameters, yeah, the weld size 10 centimeter. So phase supports the contact conditions, failure under tension, rigid friction, and so on. Then the loading. Oh. So the loading. Then the stresses on solids and the different parts and uh, belonging uh, stress ratios and the stresses in line 
Wells by line. And the graphics for the stresses. Okay. Yeah, that should be all for the presentation. Before I uh, close the webinar, I would like to show you uh, the two uh, slides. And I will show you also the website where you can find the recording and uh, yeah, the finished model and the PowerPoint slides. I turn to our website, bluebyte.com, or at first I showed the PowerPoint. Yeah, uh, again, maybe some of you take part in the middle of the webinar or miss the start. Just book your live presentation at the bar. We have a booth there. You will get a free ticket when you click on that link or scan the QR code. Where are yeah, experts on our booth that can advise you. So the next slide, yeah, uh, if you want to uh, improve your skills for the steel design, for example, you can uh, take part in the training. It costs uh, 250 euros, yeah, not much when you uh, yeah, work quickly after the uh, uh, online training. More information and registration can you find here when you click on that button or you can also scan the QR code. You can also book your free online appointment by our sales team. We can create an offer for you for our products or you can get a free product presentation. Just contact our sales team with that button or the QR code. So now I show you our website, bluebuy.com, and under news and events, you can find the webinars. That's today's webinar. That's the webinars of the next week. Steel silo design in FM6, then the FAQ webinar. I will present it on next Thursday, modeling sections in our section and so on. And then our previous webinars. So when you click on today's webinar, in the next days you will find the recording here. Uh, yeah, and you will get an email with a link to that page, also with your uh, certificate. You can find the presentation slides with the hints for the bow or the online training. You can download it and then you can find the trainings and so on. And at the bottom you can find, you can already download the finished model. Yeah, I presented the webinar also, uh, already in German and that's why we have got the model to download here. Okay, that should be all to this webinar. I would like to say thank you for your attention. Thank you to my two colleagues for answering your questions. Maybe a last hint when you leave the webinar, you know, as a small survey, would be very nice when you answer the questions or when you score the webinar. Just note that the worst score is one and the best score is five. Yeah, you can uh, yeah, enter your wishes for future webinars, for example. You can also leave it empty or enter a minus or something or other sign. Uh, it would be very nice. Okay, thanks again. I wish all a nice rest of the day. It's a sunny day here in Germany. I hope in your country as well. Yeah, bye-bye.